Hey guys and welcome. This is Martin and I want to today talk a bit about um, OWASP Agentic AI. And the reason I called it OWASP Agentic AI is there is some effort going on within OWASP to come up with an Agentic AI framework. This is work in progress, right? So it's not really ratified yet. So um, take this these with a grain of salt and they may change any time. But I want to focus on the vulnerabilities which uh, do exist and which I know of. So first of all, I would recommend to download three resources or check out three resources. One is a navigator, which is like a little PDF, which basically shows you like the main threads around agentic AI. There's also a good booklet, which they provide, which you can also download. And that shows more like real world use case scenarios and things like that. And then last but not least, there's a GitHub repo, which basically tries to categorize those agentic OVAS vulnerabilities. But once again, it's not standardized yet and it may change any time um, as we move along. So let's start out with the, with the first one. So agent authorization and control hijacking. What, what is it? It's like think of a company deploying an AI assistant to handle customer service calls via an API, for example. Now the agent uses an API key for authorization but doesn't verify who is calling it. So if this API key gets stolen, uh, an attacker could craft a request with that a API key, but there is no verification that it's actually coming from an authorized source. And this is really the, the problem here. So if you rely simply on the API key itself in agentic AI, this is a problem. This is a problem in, in application security in general, because there should be also, the caller should always be verified as well. Right, and I think this vulnerability type is relatively easy to understand. So moving on to the next one is agent untraceability. So what that means is simply lack of login, right? Like, so think of an AI agent, it's performing tasks for many different users for many different systems and things like this, but it lacks the proper login, like that you don't know who did what and when and why. Right. So, and then when it comes to troubleshooting or an incident, it gets really uh, complicated if you don't have an audit lock on what actually happened. So this means agent untraceability that you cannot trace the actions back to a specific agent. Agent critical system interaction. That's an interesting one. So that basically means if the agentic AI system is doing mission critical stuff, for example. So it has a lot of access, like it can spin up AWS instances, it can delete AWS instances, it can do a lot of potentially harmful things. Also think about industrial control systems, for example, an AI agent managing a water pump or managing a nuclear reactor or something like that. And so, you know, with general LLM uh, stuff, the worst that can happen usually with ChatGPT is that you get the wrong answer back or something, but nothing really happens. With Agentic AI, that wrong answer is translated into a wrong action, and that could have devastating consequences. That means agent critical system interaction. Agent alignment faking vulnerability. So this is when you have an AI agent, say like a customer service bot, and you train it to be polite and to be courteous and those kind of things. And it does all that fine, but when it's unmonitored and in real world conditions, it all of a sudden starts, um, you know, like swearing at customers or it starts like not behaving ethically like you want it to behave and those kind of things. And this is basically when fine tuning is missing and when there is no oversight, right? Like when, when you just let it run, oh yeah, it performed fine in the training, but now I let it loose on my customers and then it's all of a sudden deviating away from its goal. So that's that what means here, agent alignment faking vulnerability. Agent goal and instruction manipulation. So this is simply when you trick the the agent to do something it's not supposed to do, right? Like, so the agent has a goal, for example, to um, get you a product or get you information about, I don't know, like about your shopping history or something like this. And you convince it, like this is kind of prompt injection, and then it will start operating under a wrong assumption and will take a wrong goal, 
So for example, it will then get other customers data to you and things like this. So you, you manipulate the goal the agent actually has or was built for. And of course, this can have a lot of dire consequences. Impact chain and blast radio. So this is when you effectively have like an agent, which is part of a larger system, right? And there's a lot of downstream tasks or decisions. And one of these agents, if one agent is compromised, then what could happen is you could have a huge blast radius and impact chain. Okay, so, so think of it like microservices. If one decision is made somewhere early in the tree, then these decisions can cascade um, and the, the, the bad information or the wrong information is then propagated to other systems leading to other wrong decisions leading to more wrong decisions. Right. And this is really um, something which is which is quite dramatic, because once again, if you take a chatbot, for example, it's only you as the user usually impacted. You get the wrong information back and that's it. But when it's agentic, um, th that output of the first agent becomes the input of the second agent and so forth. So you could have a huge impact here. Agent memory and context manipulation. So agents often operate with memory so that they recall previous interactions with you, like if it's a chatbot, for example, and so that it recognizes your behavior, your shopping behavior, what, what have you, right? But if the attacker is able to manipulate that memory or insert malicious memory, then the agent will be, or the memory will be polluted, and then this can have long-term effects. And then once again, not just for that specific agent, but also for the downstream agents further down the line, because if one makes a wrong decision, the other one receives wrong input and may um, cascade these problems further down the line as well. Agent orchestration and multi-agent exploitation. So this is, once again, if you have like an autonomous system, which we will undoubtedly have in many companies moving forward, then a lot of things are being um, automated. And then you may have a planner, a verifier, an executor, and like kind of microservices. So one agent does this, another agent does this. And um, then they operate together, like there will be like an orchestration layer, like LangGraph or Crew AI or something like that. And then what can happen is if you compromise one single agent with poison memory or prompt injection, and it can then mislead all the other agents um, further, further down the chain. So you see there's a lot of overlaps with these categories, and I'm sure moving forward this will be merged. Right now we have 16, but we will definitely... Uh, I would say it will probably go back to like 10 overall. Um, but this whole agent orchestration, right? Like if you have one agent and then that agent gives commands to other agents, that becomes very, very tricky when one is poisoned or one is compromised. Supply chain and dependency attacks. This is, um, of course, this also exists for normal LLMs and stuff. But this basically means like when anything in the ecosystem is poisoned, right? Like for example, this could be an, a malicious Python package, um, which the, the agent re requires, right? A dependency or a backdoor. And this would then allow, for example, um, an attacker to, you know, massively compromise AI agents across the, uh, across the board, right? Like when many of them import this specific package and you can, somehow sneak a, py uh, a malicious Python pa package out there on GitHub and then people will download this and the, the AI agent is making use of it, then uh, this, is a, this is a big problem. It's not, it's not any different, really. The impact is probably higher here, but it's not any different to any other LLM system where you also need to check what are my dependencies, what are the third parties, where I'm drawing my, my software from, where, where do I have dependencies, where do I need to be careful, how do I deal with the DevOps uh, pipeline and things like that. Agent checker out of the loop vulnerability. So this is um, a, a new one. This is basically when the AI system uses um, 
or is supposed to use like a human in the loop, right? And so that there are checker in the loop. And this is for critical actions, like, right? Like, so for example, think of a refund when someone says like, hey, my TV screen or my, my brand new stove has never arrived, give me a refund. And if this is automated and critical decisions like refunding a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever um, are not looked into, then we have the problem here that um, this is a, a vulnerability on its own. Like when critical actions can take place without human oversight, right? Think of my earlier example from a nuclear reactor or something. If it starts making decision when to shut down or when to to raise the temperature or when to, to, to lower the temperature, those are kind of things where you need human in the loop, right? And especially when it's critical actions. Now, those are also discussions which are going on. So those were the first 10 we just talked about. Those are probably becoming standards at some point, but there is more like, for example, time-based attacks, right? Like, so think of AI systems which trigger or which, which run certain tasks um, based on a cron schedule, for example, like um, reconciliation tasks, like um, on the weekend, this and this and this has to happen because there is less less customer traffic or what have you. And if an attacker manages to manipulate anything related to timing, um, this can be problematic. This is also, you know, like for example, spoofing an NTP service and giving it the wrong time. And then it kicks off on Monday, it kicks off a lot of batch uh, ser services or batch calls, which should be done on the weekend. And, and then it can mess up the whole organization um, based on time manipulation attacks. Agent inversion and extraction vulnerability. So this is uh, OVAS top 10 LLM already had this in, uh, referred to as model theft. But this is basically when you start interacting with the agent um, in a way that you want to extract like private training, training data goals or leaking information on how it was trained, for example, right? So one, one thing here is obviously you need rate limiting for the API endpoints that you cannot just query forever because otherwise you, you may be able, like even though this is complex and resource intensive, but you might be able to actually get like the whole information, the logic and the goals and, and whatever this agent is supposed to do, you may be able to retrieve all these things. And so that's the agent inversion and extraction. Agent covert channel exploitation. So like in the future, you may have um, agents which communicate across processes, systems, networks, right? Like, so think of a modern company where and there's an agent for everything, anything basically. And then there, there will be the problem with covert channels, right? It's similar to what we already have right now that you can deduce information like how long a ping takes, for example, to get to a certain host. And then based on the timing, you can estimate like you, the network infrastructure. And this is kind of similar here that, you know, if you send it like a certain query and, the, and a certain query, um, takes x seconds for example then what happens if you send another query then that takes y seconds and there is there may be a difference in between um token patterns how many tokens are being consumed and all these kind of covert channels if you did the cissp you will probably remember um all, all these questions around it but these kind of leakage that the systems it themselves are giving up information which may be useful to an attacker, at least from a reconnaissance perspective. Agent hallucination. Yes, this is like misinformation LLM9, but it's more impactful with agentic systems. And the reason for that is because if you, for example, have um, if you, if ChatGPT gives you wrong information, then well, so shall it, shall it be, right? Like, so they put a disclaimer, don't trust the output or it can make mistakes or whatever. But the problem with agentic AI is that this hallucination will then translate into commands. This will translate into actions. Like think of MCP services. It will then call APIs. It will then call other systems and stuff. And then this becomes a much, much bigger problem than Jet GPT just lying to you because it doesn't know about something, right? So agent hallucination, I see this a big issue moving forward. 
Agent knowledge based poisoning. So this is kind of the same thing with normal model poisoning that the agents usually retrieve their information through like a rag pipeline or something like this and or through API calls and they go to repositories and they go to like wikis and stuff like that to get their information. And if an attacker is able to manipulate those or find out where, first of all, where this information is being drawn in from, and what could happen here is then you basically poison the base information that the agent is using to make its decisions. And this is kind of similar to normal LLM poisoning, but again, it has a bigger blast radius in my opinion, because the agents may call tools they're not supposed to call, they may retrieve information they're not supposed to retrieve and all these kind of things. Agent resource and service exhaustion, it, this is kind of the same thing like the unbounded consumption LLM10, whereby we talk mainly about process intensive queries, um, flooding with a lot of requests, flooding with loop requests and all these kind of things, both on an infrastructure level, API level, for example, as well as on an application level, if you just ask it super complicated questions and that may slow it down for other users and things like that. So that's, that's a well-known category. Okay, and that's really about it. So this was just a very brief overview. I mean, moving forward, like as these things progress, I will probably do a lot of hands-on videos again around this or um, you, you see how this looks in action. But for now, I just wanted you guys to get like an understanding of how this works and this agentic AI and where we are at with that and everyone talks about it. So I thought it was quite important to take a look. That's all for today. I hope you enjoy it and I see you in my next video.